I've talked about how Dark Souls saved my life, but I don't think I've ever played another video game that made me feel the way Nier Automata did. I don't think I've ever consumed a single piece of media in my life that made me feel the way this game did. I've never played a video game that got even close to making me cry, and Nier Automata did that multiple times for me. Yes, I know it's embarrassing I cried at a video game, but I don't care, the story was unbelievable. And it wasn't until the very end of the game that my thoughts on my own existence were completely shattered. But I'll get there. Obvious spoiler warning here, but I'm gonna keep most parts brief besides the ending. Also, a ton of people in my last story said I had inspired them to do YouTube as well and asked me for some tips, so I made a little PDF for you all if anyone's interested. I'll put it in the pinned comment below. It's totally free. And seriously, thank you for the feedback on that last video. So I had just finished my junior year of college, which I believe was right around the time I had completed the Dark Souls trilogy for the first time. Obviously, that game had a huge impact on me, so I was searching for something else to scratch that itch because my dumbass decided to grind Dark Souls 2 during finals week and finish it right before the summer started. Started. I was looking under the games you might also like section on the Xbox store and came across this anime looking game called Nier Automata. I'm not gonna lie, it did not look appealing to me whatsoever, but since I was under the impression that it was supposed to be a Souls-like, I gave it a shot. Which by the way, it's not a Souls-like, also it was on Game Pass so I didn't actually have to buy it. Since Dark Souls was one of the first new game franchises I had played in a while, I was feeling a bit more adventurous with my game selection and more willing to give things a chance. But the start of this game was rough. I liked the feeling of the combat and the weapon system, but I was not a fan of the mech parts at all. I'm also not usually a huge story guy unless I'm prepared for a story game going in, so I kind of ignored the story in the beginning just like I did with Dark Souls. And looking back, I can't believe this story ended up being one of the most incredible stories I've ever experienced. So I get through the intro and all the mech parts, and I finally get to the part where I can kind of just free roam and run around. This is when I started liking the game a lot because the movement and combat were both really fun, so I enjoyed exploring while listening to the best video game soundtrack of all time while doing so. After a while of running around killing robots, I finally went to the area the game was trying to make me go for the past four hours, the resistance camp. This is where things got a bit more intriguing for me. Being a Souls player, I made sure to exhaust everyone's dialogue, which took forever, but some of the story- God damn it. Exhausting everyone's dialogue took forever, but some of the stories I heard from the characters started to interest me a bit. The way they would vaguely describe their lives and left so many questions unanswered had me wondering what this game was leading to. I had no idea what I was in for. But after that, I learned all the upgrade stuff and started to figure out the system, which was pretty cool. They sent me to a desert biome, which had me really excited. I don't know why, but games like this that have different biomes for each level are really cool and exciting to me, so I was really curious to see what would come next. The desert area is when the robots you're fighting start talking like humans, and you start to wonder how they adopted these phrases and why. After the robots continue to act more and more like humans, and a strange boss fight with someone who feels like another android, I reached the area that really got me excited about this game, the carnival. Even though this game is linear, something Thing about seeing a huge carnival and being able to explore it was so much fun to me. And don't even get me started on and I still wasn't really paying attention to the story until I reached Adam and Eve. This is when I started to understand the story a bit more. The robots were created by aliens and sent to Earth while the androids are fighting to save Earth and protect the humans. Okay, cool story. Nothing that deep or anything though. Oh, you precious child. Fast forward to the end of the first ending. I'm not even going to try to pretend like I fully understand what was going on, but essentially it seemed like the machines gained consciousness after realizing the aliens that sent them to their mission were extinct, causing them to wonder what the point was anymore. So basically the Androids are confused because some of the machines seem nice, and everyone's wondering what the point of all this fighting is. We also learn that 2B is basically assigned to kill 9S over and over, causing him to lose his memories every time. This is definitely when it got interesting, but I didn't think it would go much further than this. The second playthrough is from the perspective of 9S. It's cool to see everything from his point of view, but to be honest, I didn't get much more out of this one, but I still think it was necessary for the overall story to work. The third playthrough is when things really got interesting. I don't want to dissect it too much here, but basically, you learn the truth behind Yorha, it was a project created to make the androids think humans had gone to the moon and they were fighting for their return to Earth. But in reality, the humans are extinct. The machines were created with the only goal of destroying their enemy, which becomes confusing if the enemy is already destroyed. Now, I didn't want to get super into the story because I haven't done my research or paid super close attention, but that's what I got from it up to that point. And the story was super impactful for me, but it was just a fictional story. Yeah, it was much more deep and complicated than most I had consumed, but I couldn't tell you why this was making me feel so strongly about it. 
it had to tie into real life somehow. It had to be some sort of metaphor. But basically what I could get out of it was, if there's no point to life, we can still live for each other. Which I think is interesting and definitely gave me a new sense of purpose within the real world, realizing even if this is all for nothing, at least we all have each other. We care about our friends and family and those relationships alone can give us meaning in life in times where it feels like there is none. Seeing it happen firsthand in this game was super eye-opening, but I didn't realize I still had the true ending that would change my life. Now, there's a ton I skipped over leading up to this point, but basically, I got super invested in the characters and story, but I still had a lot of questions. It definitely had an impact on me up to this point, but it was more in a way where it would make me question certain things about my life and my existence. Then I reached the true ending. After about 15 minutes of shooting and the end credits, wondering if it was even leading to anything, I died. Thinking that would be the end of it, the game asked if I give up. Obviously, I chose no and kept going. But the further I got, the more it felt like it might genuinely not be possible to make it through, so maybe I should give up since the game keeps asking. But knowing how the game had progressed so far, I had a feeling there was no way I was actually supposed to give up. I kept dying, and each time the screen gave me a new prompt asking me things, tempting me to quit, saying, is it pointless? And honestly, I wouldn't have put it past this game to make you keep going until you realize it really is pointless, especially because it would make sense with the theme of the game and be super depressing like most of the story is. But of course, I couldn't give up. After a few more deaths, I started noticing these messages on the screen. It reminded me of the messages people leave in Dark Souls, people saying things like, I'm rooting for you, or do your best, and I started to get the feeling that these might actually be from real people. But I still wasn't sure if it was just the game messing with me. Finally, after a few more deaths, it asks if I want to accept a rescue offer, and I say yes. Obviously now, the minigame becomes 10 times easier because of this, but I'm still dying every once in a while and wondering what really is the point. And by the way, throughout this entire thing, the music is incredible. It gave me 90% of the emotions I felt throughout this game. But anyway, after getting help from the game or other players or whatever it was, I reached the end. I find out it was from other players, but it came with a cost. First of all, they let you write down your own message to other players struggling with the final mission, which shows you that it was other players online writing to you. Then they ask if you have any interest helping the week after you went through all that difficulty. Of course, I say yes, still unsure of what I'm agreeing to. Then they explain if you choose to save someone else in the world, you lose all of your save data. Fine, whatever, I agree. They ask if I'm sure because it will be a random person, even someone I may dislike. Yeah, I still agree. They say you worked so hard to unlock chapter select in different modes, these will be gone too. This one got me for a second. I thought about it and I was like, man, what if I want to come back to one specific part and I can't? So selfishly, I declined, but I actually am so ashamed that I did decline, but at the same time, I had to buy and play this entire game again just to get footage for it, so I paid the price for sure. I did end up needing help with footage anyway, their link is in the description. But with me saying I had to play the entire game again just to get footage for it, you can probably guess what ended up happening. I said no and that was it. Obviously, I felt guilty, but I thought, eh, someone else will help, it's not my responsibility. Let me just say how happy I am now not to have this kind of mindset anymore, I thought Dark Souls taught me better. So I go to sleep that night still thinking about the game and the ending, thinking about how it related and tied in with my real life. And I couldn't sleep, replaying that last scene over and over in my head. But I don't want to lose my save data, it's fine. I said, trying to make myself feel better. And then it hit me. That last mission was the entire point of the game. There is no point to any of this if we don't have each other, even if we don't know the person. Us as humans can find purpose with one another, even if there is no purpose at all. Which by the way, I do think there is a purpose to life, but everyone has times when they reflect and wonder what's the point of everything. So I jump out of bed and hop on my Xbox. I realized I had made a huge mistake. I have to go through the entire credit screen minigame again, request help again, and finally, I make it to the end. I select yes on every single prompt without hesitation. Ishin would be proud. Part of me thought they just let me keep my save files for doing the right thing. <laughs> No. I watched as they slowly erased all the evidence of me ever even playing the game. It was such a strange moment of fulfillment. And that's when I cry, but we don't have to get into that. The point is, it's hard for me to put into words how great this story is and how much it impacted me. You just have to see it for yourself. And that moment at the end brought some reality to the story that I was not ready for. Me in the real world had to delete all my save files that I spent weeks getting in order to help some random person around the world achieve the same thing. And the beautiful part of this is that everyone will get the same sense of fulfillment after by deleting their save files to help someone else. I'd love to see the stats on what percentage of people decided to do that because I'd bet it's pretty high. And that's really 
really the crazy part. If no one was choosing to be selfless, no one could complete the game and pass on assistance to the next player. When I jumped out of bed, I realized it was truly my duty to do this, to be selfless and sacrifice that for the greater good. And I know some people are going to be like, oh, it's just a video game. Relax. It's not that deep. Do you not change your personality a little bit for a day every time you watch a movie with a cool main character? Do you not cry to an emotional song after a breakup? It's time people realize that video games are just as impactful, if not more impactful than any other art form and are extremely valid in the ways they can shape a person's mentality. Sure, deleting my save files to help someone else beat the game didn't save the world, but it was a step I took in the virtual world that I carry with me into reality. I remember that lesson all the time and it's made me much more willing to make the small sacrifices every day to make someone else's day and make the world a better place. It's not about doing one huge thing that changes the world, it's about doing small things every day that cause a ripple effect amongst everyone you encounter. Did I just say amongst? But seriously, like if you're super happy and always trying to be positive, that really rubs off on people. Make the decisions that make the world a better place. Because if we don't have anything, we always have each other. But you'll never have my outro.